rotate that lock screw to unlock it then we can rotate the bonnet here So there used to be a screw in there, there's certainly not now. Off with the speed setting cam plate. I'll unhook the main spring. That's um, mutilated. That's that's sort of that spring's been damaged. You see the end of it there? It's been stretched out. That'll never have proper tension. And here's the dog's breakfast of the flash sink arrangement that's been made here. There's a contact here, which would make with that spring on the lever. Oh, that shutters the sticky ears. That's terrible. Okay, so let's get rid of this flash port first. There's a screw from the outside of the case. If this crack will peel out, it will. We won't be requiring any of that rubbish. Some bits of insulation in here, which look pretty old to me. There's some sort of insulating tape, but they are not PVC. There's a good selection of this. Three holes and a notch cut into the side of the shutter case there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about those yet. I think they'll be alright. I don't think they'll cause us any problem. Alright, so what have we got here? I'm going to remove the tripod socket here, or what would be the tripod socket, the cable release socket. Here it's just a guide because the cable release is on the top of the body, I think. Slide that out, yep. Put that crap off to one side, we don't need to see that again. This arm here can come out, unhook its spring. Here's our high speed spring, the 500th of a second speed spring. The shutter release lever should come out. What's with all these springs? Hang on. Something funny has been done here. Why does that surprise me? That hasn't got its spring on in the right place. It's got a spring somewhere else. Oh, this spring's doing that job. Okay. Well, that's, that's permissible. That's a variation I don't remember seeing. This is the B lever. I'll split the case.
Here's our mechanism plate with the shutter blades on it. Here's our case with the diaphragm blades in it. As you can see, there's a fair bit of oil on those blades. They're a bit sticky. And there are fragments of aluminium here. Now that's where someone drilled something out. It could be with no drilling holes in the shutter case. Okay, I'm going to take this tab off because it's going to make it easier for me to put this thing back together if I do. Now, remove the diaphragm from the case. This will be awkward to get back in place because unlike later shutters, you can't assemble it all and then put the case over it. The, it has to be pretty much assembled in the case. I'll just tip those bits out. There's our blades. And here, this mo moving piece here, yeah, it's looking pretty grimy. There's something odd about the head of that screw. It might just be oil staining. I hope it's not just glued in there. It's not uncommon for people to strip the screw out here. In which case, the best solution is probably to rivet it in place. But people do all sorts of evil things. Alright, this is our settings lever from the back. Here's our case. It's exceptionally grimy. And all of these parts will now have to be cleaned up until I've got them free from grime. Probably my biggest concern with the shutter is going to be the state of that main spring. Because it looks stretched up out of shape. I'll have to see if I can find a better example of that spring. Otherwise, the shutter will never ever develop anything even vaguely like the speeds it's supposed to develop. It's difficult to tell from the evidence in front of me when this when this camera was uh, customized. If I'd just seen the accessory shoe on the top cover, I would have said, "Well, that's obviously a hot shoe type shoe." which is missing its insulator and contact in the middle and that would have to come from a camera from the late 60s or 70s. But the state of the switch on the back of that inside the shutter and the insulating tape in particular that had been used to hold everything together would lead me to lead me to believe that actually that that shutter job had been done earlier than that. So I might have to compromise. So that somewhere between 1955 and 1970, somebody did that awful job. This is very, very sticky. Look at the grease on that. The 
the grease has uh, actually caused corrosion to form on the back of that plate. So it must have, the breakdown products of that grease must have been slightly acidic or something. Most definitely. Right, one more cleaning and that piece should be good. Okay. Here's the fixed plate. One side of this faces the diaphragm blades and one side of it faces the shutter blades. This, this face that faces the shutter blades, there's no obvious problems with that. A little bit, a bit greasy perhaps, but no worse than that. That's good, a little bit marked, but that's quite normal. So I've got three screws that hold the retainer plate in place and two that hold the settings ring in place. And here's the diaphragm. Now it's quite normal for a diaphragm to come out as a rosette like that. They don't um, just automatically fall apart. Particularly if they've got a bit of oil on them they'll stick like this. If you left the oil on blades like this, what will happen is that, particularly in cold weather when the oil is exceptionally viscous, it'll stick the blades together. And when you force the diaphragm setting ring, something has to give. And what will happen is that the blades will end up getting distorted. Or they'll pull out of their slots and you've got a nuisance problem. Well, the case is clean. Then you put this ring back in place in the setting lever. And I've got to remember which way up the setting lever is going to go. It should be at the bottom of the shutter. That's the bottom of the shutter. And line the holes up and get those shoulder screws, one of which is doing its best to get away. Get that started. So it's mate on the other side. Now I'm supporting that this ring on this block of wood here so that uh, I'm not distorting anything. Snip those screws up lightly. Don't overdo it. They strip out quite easily. And I'm checking the movement here, making sure it's smooth. And it is smooth. That doesn't need anything further done to that, that's good. So I will clean the blades up next and then reassemble the diaphragm. You know, I'll just remove the fingerprints I've handily put on there while I've been assembling it. That's good. 
and these blades. Okay, I'll work my way through these. Diaphragm blades, you need to be reasonably cautious cleaning them because they have the rivets on them. It's easy to catch your cleaning cloth or your cotton bud on the rivets and bend the blade. And you don't want to do that, that's a nuisance. I'm going to start with a fresh piece of paper here because this one is too contaminated with little bits of greasy detritus and I'll be cleaning the blades five times if I try and do it on that piece of paper. So I'm going to work my way through these blades, get the whole, uh, is it ten of them? One, two, five, yeah ten of them, get all ten of them clean and then I'll put the diaphragm back together.